Hey everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. On my channel, I bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today, I have four brand new, easy Dollar Tree farmhouse DIY projects that anyone can do using easy to find craft supplies. Here we go. For today's first project, I'm using two of these small wood crates, one of these metal windmills, this three arrow hanging sign from summer, and some paint and other supplies. So the first thing I'm going to do after I scrape the little bit of glitter off of here is I am giving two coats of elephant chalk paint to the front sides of these. They look like arrows, but we're going to make them look like a picket fence. So two coats covers up the printing and then we're also going to do one coat on the back side and then give each of our two crates this same dark gray elephant color. Then I'm taking the lighter gray which is mineral and my chip brush and just dry brushing some streaks on these three fence posts to make them look old and worn and then we will do the same thing on the front and sides of our two wooden crates. Next, to lighten up the color of the windmill, we're going to paint it, but first you do need to, if you want, remove this little bracket from the back. You totally could leave this on and have your windmill be able to spin on your project. I wanted just the circle part, so I did remove that. Now I'm giving it a coat of mineral chalk paint just to lighten up the color, like I said, and go ahead and paint the little circle that connects the windmill pieces as well. You can paint the center if you want. Now I'm going to take my Gorilla Wood Glue and I'm going to glue my two crates side by side. This just gives us a larger space to fill and decorate. Go ahead and clamp those until they are completely dry. Now I did not glue the three fence posts to each other. I figured the fact that they are going to be glued to the crates will hold them together just fine. So then I line up the center of the two crates on the center fence post. They do hang over on the sides just a little bit, but I love the width of this piece. Then I'm coming back to my windmill. It was still a little too dark, so I'm also going to dry brush some white on the windmill, just again to make it look older and a little bit lighter. Now you have a lot of options for words you can put on the front of your crates. Those I would definitely paint white because they're too close to the same color. Um, some of the signs from Dollar Tree now have little metal words on them. I found this one at a local store that I'm going to cut apart mm -hmm. and just use the home and then two of the stars. I'd also say you could use the wood letters from Dollar Tree and paint those and say whatever you want on the front of your crate. I am going to paint those white though because I thought they would stand out better than the black. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my jute twine, hot glue the end to the back of my project, and then you can see I got some little splatters on the back there. You could just paint over those or I just sanded the back and blended them in. I'm going to wrap my jute twine just around the top about four times just to give it a little bit more decoration at the top of our project. And now using a combination of the Fix-All adhesive and hot glue, I'm going to glue my metal words to the front of my crates and then also glue the windmill 
to the back of the project. If you haven't seen this hack before, these pool noodles are really great and less expensive substitutes for floral foam. So here you can see I just cut a piece as wide as the crate. I cut it in half and I'm gonna put a half in the bottom of each of my little crates here. Then I'm going to take some of my reindeer moss and after putting some hot glue on the pool noodle, I'm going to cover that with some reindeer moss. Now you'll notice I did not hot glue the pool noodle into the crate. It wedged in there pretty good, and so I can change this out whenever I want. Now comes the really fun part, is decorating this little box, um, planter box, with whatever florals or greenery you want. I'm just using some of the spring florals that I have on hand. This would be really easy to change out for the seasons as well. If you're new to my channel, I hope you like what you see. And if you like budget home decor DIYs, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also hit the bell and choose all notifications so that YouTube will let you know whenever I upload new videos. Lately, I've been getting two new videos out per week, which I'm super excited about. I hope I can keep up with that pace, but I love creating and sharing with you all. And here's a close-up look at our finished product. Let's see, two crates, the hanging sign, the windmill. So about four, five dollars if you include the cost of the florals to make this project. And I absolutely love it. For project number two, I'm using four of these wooden ovals from Dollar Tree. This wall sticker, one five gallon paint stick, and some antique wax and Mod Podge. This is a very simple project that I was wanting to do for a long time. And you can definitely take this idea and modify it um, to fit whatever wall sticker you want, whatever shapes. I just think it's super easy and quick and beautiful, so I wanted to share it with you. Now, you guys know I love my antique wax. If this is too dark for you, you can just water down some brown acrylic paint, or if you like that light natural wood color, just put a layer of Mod Podge over your wood before you move on to this next step of attaching the wall sticker. So this is a Bible verse sticker that says, be patient, be humble. I can't remember what the, uh, be patient, no, be patient, be humble. You'll see the third one and be loving. And then it gives the scripture. So I just put a light layer of Mod Podge and then I'm going to center the pieces as best I can on each of the wood ovals. There it is. Be patient, be humble, be gentle, be loving. Ephesians 4, 2. Once all those are dry, I did put another layer of Mod Podge over the top of the sticker just to make sure everything was sealed down. And then I'm just going to glue them to this paint stick. A lot of times I'll hang things um, with nautical rope, but I liked this. I wanted it to be more uniform with the antique wax. So I glue the top one first and then the bottom one, and then I will evenly space out ovals two and three. Thank you. 
So the last thing I decided to do was make a little hanger for the back. You will not see it because it hangs below the oval, but I'm just using a piece of that jute twine with wire. And I love how classy and clean this looks. Of course, you could farmhouse it up some more, maybe wrap some jute twine around the paint stick between each of the ovals. But I just really love this. I think I'm gonna hang it in our bathroom as a reminder. For project number three, I'm using tumbling tower blocks, three of these jars, two of these hanging Valentine signs that each have the three metal hearts on them. So of these four pieces, I'm only going to use three. But what I'm going to do first is remove all six of these galvanized hearts because we will be using those in our final project. Then I'm also taking my scraper and just scraping off any loose glitter. Remove the staples and the strings from the back and just sand the back down to make it nice and smooth. I am going to use two of the Love with the glitter and then one of the other. You can see there's a little bit of cardboard there, but that's not a big deal. The paper peeled off really easily and I'm just going to paint with my black chalk paint over that side and then also over the two love side. So basically the fronts of all three of these pieces and I'm doing the sides and the ends as well. So now these are the back sides of the signs. I decided I wanted to give like a wood plank look. So I'm taking these giant craft sticks from Walmart and going up and down, I can get two pieces out of each craft stick. So I'm using 11 of these craft sticks to make 22 of these smaller pieces. If you cut slowly with your scissors, you can cut these easily with a regular pair of scissors here. So now that I have all 22 of my pieces, I'm again going to use my antique wax because I love it so much and go ahead and brush it on each piece, also on the sides and the top and bottom, and then wipe off the excess to see that beautiful wood grain look come through. And here's what they look like with all the beautiful um, stain on the craft sticks. I realized I needed to paint the other side of this middle piece with black as well. Now going to the other two sides of our box that we're making, I'm going to use wood glue and glue down each of the craft sticks pieces to the sign. Now I'm going to show you a couple options for the ends of your box. If you have any of these signs from Dollar Tree, you could use one on each end. You would just have a little bit of a gap on the bottom corners of your box, not a big deal. What I decided to do for each end of the box, I'm using 12 tumbling tower blocks. So here you can see I am first gluing them together in pairs. And then once the pairs are dry, I will glue the pairs together in a row of six and then I'll glue my two rows of six together. You'll see here in a minute. So I'm going to do this two times, one time for each end of my box. Here I am now gluing the pairs together in sets of six. And then we'll make two sets of six to make a square and that will be one end of our box. Now, I thought these jars were so cool. I loved the lattice pattern on them, so I decided to use them for this project. First, I'm going to take my white Waverly chalk paint and a chip brush, and I'm just going to lightly paint each of my jars. I'm not trying to cover it completely. While those are drying, I'm coming back to the ends of my box and just giving them a coat of my black chalk paint all over. Once my jars are dry, I'm taking my sanding sponge from Dollar Tree and lightly sanding so that the paint comes off the raised lattice of the jar and just doing a little bit of sanding around the top and the bottom. Now, I don't want this chalk paint to chip off anymore, so I am doing the added step of matte finish Mod Podge over 
the chalk paint on our jars. Now that our wood slats are dried on our sides of our box, we can assemble our box. So here is one of those squares of 12 tumbling tower blocks that we made. We're going to use a combination of Gorilla Wood Glue and some hot glue and go ahead and stand that up on the end of what is the bottom of our box. And we'll do that to both sides. Now before I put the sides of the box on, I wanted to use these galvanized hearts again. I was originally going to do them in sets of three like they were originally on the Dollar Tree sign, but then I decided I wanted a, a heart on each end of our box. So on the front, on the two sides that have the wood craft sticks, I'm going to do two hearts. So that'll be four total. And then with the other two hearts, I'm gonna put one on each end. You'll see here in just a minute. So now to assemble our box, I'm running some hot glue on the side of my tumbling tower blocks square. You could also put some on the bottom there, but I didn't worry about that. I just had the glue there on the two sides and it held just fine. So I love the look with the wood and the metal and the black. I just really love how farmhouse this looks. And then with our jars, once that Mod Podge was dry, I am going to wrap the top of each of my three jars with jute twine. I just attach some hot glue and then start wrapping. Now these jars were a little short for this box, so I'm gonna fix that by just putting a layer of blocks that I had in the bottom. Now if you had taller jars, you don't need to do this step, but I wanted to see more of that pretty pattern on the jars. So stick some blocks in the bottom, cover them up with some of this hay or a moss, and then fill the jars with whatever florals or greenery you like. I love this and again you could change this out for the seasons. For the last project, I just wanted to share with you something I've been wanting to do for our game room in our basement. I have some of these eight by eight canvas panels from Michaels, some letters that I printed off the computer, some mineral chalk paint, and a black Sharpie marker. So these come in sets of five for $5, and then you can get them with a coupon as well, so they're even cheaper than the ones at Dollar Tree. The other thing I'm going to use for this project is some tracing paper and a stylus. So I showed you there what I'm making for all five of our names, our first names in our family. So I needed 24 of these canvas panels. I gave each one a coat of mineral chalk paint. Um, I just wanted that color so it would stand out more from the wall these are going on. So give each one a nice coat, let it dry, make sure you get the edges, and then you can move on to the next part, which is I did give it a light sanding to kind of make the streaks disappear if there were any. And then taking my carbon tracing paper, I'm going to use the stylus to transfer this letter to the canvas. This is really, really economical. You get so many pieces of this tracing paper and I only used one sheet for all the letters that I needed to make. So here you can see it. And then I'm taking a black Sharpie paint marker and I trace my tracing and then fill it in. The numbers I did just freehand in the corner, but here you can see all the traced and colored in letters. 
This was actually really fun and therapeutic to do. Now you don't have to do these so large. You could use some of the wood squares from Dollar Tree to do this idea as well. Thanks so much you guys for joining me today. Please let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite. Also be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram and let me know if you guys are ready for spring DIYs. I really want it to be spring. See ya. Bye.